Yo, what's up guys? Sting here, bringing you a commentary today. And first off, I want to say thank you for 400. It's, uh, you know, great to be here. Thanks so much for 400 subscribers. That's awesome. And, um, yeah, so I guess today I really am not going to talk about the gameplay too much. I, you know, couldn't really think of anything important or insightful to talk about in terms of Uncharted. So I was like, what can I talk about that's somewhat interesting? So I decided to talk about refugees. It's something I know about and um, something that might be interesting. I, I know you guys don't come to YouTube and watch Uncharted videos to learn about refugees, but if you don't want to hear about uh, refugees in the, in the United States, then you should probably click off the video. As some of you know, um, I am a, I'm in social work, so I work with refugees. Um, I'm the housing coordinator at a nonprofit called Heartland Alliance for Human Needs and Human Rights. And I work uh, in the department, it's a really big organization, and I work in the department uh, called Refugee and Immigrant Community Services. And it's one of the biggest nonprofits here in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, yeah, so um, and I'm basically in charge of finding apartments for newly arriving refugees and uh, helping them, you know, set up their apartments and, uh, you know, advocating for them with, you know, building relationships with landlords and basically taking care of all of their housing needs. So, yeah, I just thought it'd be interesting to have, you know, have a discussion about what it's like for a person to come from another country and resettled here in the United States. And for those folks that don't know, a re refugee is defined as someone that flees their country of origin uh, because of fear of violence or persecution. So uh, you actually have to leave your home country in order to be considered a refugee. So the United States takes in more refugees than any other country. So, which is a great thing, which is awesome. Uh, you know, that's part of what the United States is about, helping other countries and helping other nations and helping other people. Um, and yeah, so that's a good thing. Um, but we're sort of a quantity and not a quality um, assistance country. There are other countries like Australia or Scandinavia that you know will take in fewer refugees uh, but the help that they provide them is more significant. So they'll help them for a longer period of time um, and they'll, the financial assistance that they give them is far greater and refugees have a far easier time in um, many of these other countries. And basically what happens is, is that the State Department funds uh, refugee re resettlement. So basically for every person that comes in to the country, the federal government gives them $925 per person. So they give this money to the resettlement agency in order to provide for their needs. So this is a one-time allotment. So take a single individual for example. So a studio apartment in the city of Chicago, a uh, bad, you know, not a very nice one, is $600 for a security deposit and $600 for first month's rent. So that's $1,200 right there. So before this person even arrives in this country, uh, that money is gone plus some. And this money is meant to last for three months. I mean, that's what's known as the resettlement period. That's, you know, when the State Department contracts with these agencies, um, that's the time that the financial assistance for these people is made available. And so three months is, you're expected to basically learn the language, uh, learn about U.S. culture, get any assistance that you might need in terms of therapy or psychotherapy for you know any violence or torture that you might have experienced and you know find a job you know that pays enough to support yourself and your family so the United States is very much a pull yourself up by your bootstraps country uh, when it comes to you know helping 
people, the welfare state, etc. And that's all well and good in theory, but when you have no bootstraps to pull up, uh, it can be very difficult for people. Now, right now, the United States is taking in a lot of refugees from Iraq uh, from, for pretty obvious political reasons. And this group uh, faces particularly difficult challenges. Um, they, they come, many of them come with advanced degrees. So they come, you know, with dentists, they come as doctors, um, they come with, you know, they come with education, you know, which is ostensibly a good thing. And it is a good thing. But, you know, the problem is when they come here, their degrees are basically worthless. Um, and so they're faced with taking jobs as, you know, dishwashers, you know, working in factories, um, you know, basically doing entry-level minimum wage work that, you know, is sort of emasculating to them or is dispiriting. And many of them, you know, refuse to take the jobs that agencies have to offer or that they're eligible for because they're like, this is, this is not what I was trained to do, uh, you know, which makes sense. But, um, you know, the next question is, well, then how are you going to pay the rent and pay the bills? And many of these people are people that help the United States government in some way. So, you know, they helped as interpreters during the Iraq war. Um, or they helped in various administrative capacities. And so they come to the United States, you know, expecting, uh, you know, help and a significant amount of help and good jobs. And unfortunately, when they come here, uh, they're sort of, you know, just let down, um, in other words. And, you know, it just, it, it's a very frustrating experience for them. And many Iraqi refugees who have the financial means actually decide to return back to Iraq because they find the United States, you know, so difficult. Um, and I think many people, especially from Iraq, have sort of romanticized ideas about the United States. Um, they come thinking that everyone here, you know, has a house, has a car, has a job, has internet. Um, has phone and like everything, like all your needs are provided for without any difficulty, you know, whatsoever. I mean, that may be an exa exaggeration, but, you know, that's sort of the sentiment. And then when they come here and, and they find out that, you know, hey, you know, like there's a few people that have all the money <laughs> and like the rest of us are, you know, working hard and just struggling to pay the bills. And like these are people that are actually born here. So anyway guys, I don't mean to paint such a bleak picture of refugee resettlement in the United States. I mean there are countless families that come here and get education and establish themselves and create good lives. Um, I think I just focus upon the challenges because that's how you move forward and that's how you create awareness of the difficulties that people face so that you know something can be done about it and like something can change. So you don't really make progress by dwelling in what works. You make progress by talking about the issues. So I think that's why I do that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my rampant here on Temple. I go 30 and 1. Uh, nice, nice game. Good score. Obviously, playing against noobs. You know, you don't get scores like that playing against pros. But good score. Um, I have now succeeded in getting a rampant on every map, um, which is cool. I, I now have 118, so um, making progress there as well. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, you know, thoughts about what I said, any you know ideas about the commentary. Uh, anything you would like to ask me or questions about refugees, uh, please leave it in the comments. And if you haven't, please subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Peace and love.